It is 29 minutes past 10, and you're listening to Nahal live on the BBC Asian Network. Is there anyone out there who thinks that the full life-term sentence handed out to Michael Adebalajo is inhuman? His lawyer felt that to sentence his client to a full life term, which means he will die in prison, was inhuman. Do you agree? And what about the death sentence for these men? Do you believe that they should, in fact, be hung for what they did? We've already had two callers, Rab and Bupinda, who said they would probably do it themselves, given half a chance. But what about forgiveness? Rehabilitation? Is it an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth? Or is the true test of faith your ability to be able to forgive those who have harmed you, who have hurt you, who have murdered someone you love? What about that? Tony in Birmingham. Good morning to you, Tony. Good morning, sir. What do you think? I should have been executed full stop. Really? Yes, definitely. And I would do it myself without any qualms. I mean, these people, as far as I'm concerned, have got no chance of rehabilitation, no matter how long they spend in prison. Their antics in the court yesterday when the sentence was read out is demonstration of that. And, I mean, to go back to an earlier point when you said people were confusing justice with revenge... Yes, this was a tweet that came in. Yeah, isn't all punishment, in effect, an act of revenge, be it an individual's or society's revenge on someone who they've deemed to have committed a crime against them or the society which they represent? Mm. So, you talk about justice, what is justice? All punishment is revenge. And if I could go a little step further... Do it. That soldier who uh, executed that Taliban guy who was wounded in Afghanistan, in my opinion, there is no difference between him and these two guys who killed Lee Rigby. And that soldier, in my opinion, should have been executed for his crime. Mm. Tony, thank you very much indeed. Iram is on the line. Iram. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you very much. Um... What about this idea that they can't be rehabilitated, which is what um, pretty much everybody has said, that they can't change? Uh, well, I, I, I just love how topics like these bring out the pitchfork wielding um, vigilantes in all of us. Um, I'd like to know how everyone's so certain that these people can't be rehabilitated. It's been, what, um, a year, uh, well, less than a year since um, since Lee read these Ugh, horrific murder. Um, so of course they haven't changed their minds at all. But how do we know if in twenty years, thirty years time they won't have changed? All right, Iran, 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 Iran. Stay there for a second, Tony. Uh, pitchfork wielding. Iran has said, "How do you know? I mean, it's still so close to the crime. How do you know they won't be or they can't be rehabilitated? Are you one of these pitchfork wielding people that Iran speaks of, Tony?" Tony? No, we don't seem to have Tony. Have we lost Tony? Um, that's a shame. I thought we still yeah. had Tony with um, us. Go on, Iram. Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, I remember a couple of months ago, um, I had to interview a few people, and we were discussing this very question, you know, about whole life sentences. And, of course, the majority said, yes, we should hand them all. They should be left to rot. They should not have any rights whatsoever. But... I came across one particular man, and he would go on the record to speak, but his views are absolutely amazing. And he said, a person who comes out of jail is not the same person who committed the crime. Uh, Okay, Uh, 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 I'm going to stop you there for a second. Stay with us, because that's a very important point, actually, to go to my next caller, who's Ali, not his real name. Ali, thank you so much for calling in this morning. Uh, it's okay, no problem. I'll listen to you so I'll sound it's wicked. Thanks, mate. I've Thanks, mate. Subject, I've been waiting for a subject that's close to me heart. And obviously you've got it today because I got a 20-year prison sentence quite a few years ago. Did, so did you spend Did you now. spend 20 or did you spend 10 years in prison? How long did you spend in prison? I spent over 13, which was the maximum I could do on my sentence. 13 years in prison. Now, Iran was talking about people's ability to be able to change and be rehabilitated. Were you rehabilitated? Did you change? Were you a different person when you came out? 
Well, the people who know me now say I haven't changed at all. I'm still the same person, you know what I mean? But inside, I know I've changed, yeah. So I made, I made that will to change. But that was me personally. But talking about these two guys, who are you talking about? They're not getting out, so they're not going to change either. You don't think so? I mean, you, you. I mean, look. I'm not going to ask you what you went inside for, but for you to get a 20 year prison sentence, I mean, we all know that it must have been something pretty serious, Ali. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there may have been those at the time who would have said about you, "Oh, take away the key, throw it away, lock him up, never want to see him again." But you've come out and you have managed to have a life. Now, I'm not saying for a second that you did something as heinous and as terrible as these two men did. Mm. Of course you didn't, because you'd still be inside if you had it done. Mm. But you believe that people can change, because you did change, right? Yeah, I changed, but some people don't change. Do they? You come out, you re-offend. I come out, I re-offended. I had to go back for 12 months. Right. I've only been out 12 months. Do you know what I mean? Right. So I feel the first time that I come out... Because you build up an idea of what life's going to be. Because you don't know, do you? Things change. When I went away, there wasn't even mobile phones or internet. My gosh. Um, do you Things feel that... that so... do, 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 would you welcome bringing back the death sentence, Ali? Do you think that some people deserve it? And, and, and there are some people who argue that life in prison is cushy. That these men will go there, they'll have television, they'll be fed three times a day, they'll get exercised that it's actually more like a holiday camp. What do you think of that? Someone who spent 13 years of his life in prison. Well, people who were saying that, I'd like them to go and see, I'd like to see them go and do it and tell me it's a holiday camp. Because you're just, you're just a pet, aren't you? They let you out for exercise, they feed you, and they send you to work, you know what I mean? You're just a pet to them. Mm. Mm, so you know, you know me. I'm an opinionated person, mate. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm loving the fact there's, that you there's, are. there's good things in jail. There's bad things in jail, but there's more bad. That's why people reoffend. Do you know what I mean? Because there's nothing up there. If, go on. But were I'm you? Were you? Were you? you? Were you ever a violent man? Well, I went to prison for violence. Right. Okay. So you went, and do you think now that you're not a violent man? No, I'm not now. So you, it would take much more to provoke you now than perhaps it would have done 20 odd years ago? Yeah. Hmm. Um, Iram, is... Some people change, some people don't change, you know. Right. So when you were in prison, did you meet people who you knew were pretty much psychopathic and would never change? Yeah. You can see people like that. There's, there was people in there who ain't getting out. They've got nothing to lose, you know. Mm. There's, there's things that go on in there, I swear down the hell, you don't know. I don't want to say on the radio, you know what I mean? Yeah, I no, well, you know, I've, 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 I've I can't say that things. Well, I've, I've had mates who've been to prison, so mm. I know, I mean, I, I know yeah. from, from them, and I've, I've visited one of my friends in prison before, so, and, you know, it's, I mean, he's a, he's a giant lump of a fella, so mm. he didn't have too much trouble, but mm. it, 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 it was an holiday camp for him. That's, that's, so uh, I tell you what's a killer. So I tell you what's a killer, yes. he's going to laugh now. Do you know when there's no rookie in that? Where there's no what, sorry? No roti. Oh, there's no roti, okay. <laughs> I'll tell it, yeah. Right. That's okay. a sentence in itself. Right, okay. Well, you're, you're back out, and hopefully, Ali, I'll take it you're on the straight and narrow now. Yeah, definitely. Good definitely. man. Keep listening. Thank you so much for calling in today. Yeah. Cheers, mate. All right, thanks a lot. Cheers, yeah. bye. Hearing from a man who spent 13 years in prison. Um, Iram, I mean, that's a man who spent 13 years in prison and believes that people can't be changed. He's just proved my point. He came on saying, oh, these men will never change. And then, you know, throughout his uh, his speech there, he just demonstrated how prison changed him and how he's not the same person. He's not this angry man anymore. I'll tell you another example. Um, I like Muslims always go on about Malcolm X and what a great hero he is. And yet he converted to Islam when he was in prison and he changed and he renounced his ways. You have to give people that chance to, to change and rehabilitate. If you say to someone, you know what, you're scum, you can never change, this is it for you. Of course they're not going to change because they don't see the point of it. Now, I'm not for one second saying that what these men did was, it was, it was disgusting. Um... And if they haven't changed their views, if they haven't renounced their ways, then fine, yes, keep them in there for 40 years. But if they show signs that they've truly repented and they've changed and they're so ashamed of what they've done in 10, 20, 30 years' time, 
then why don't we give them that chance? This is what the human is about, about showing forgiveness, about showing tolerance. You know, why should we just completely damn somebody to eternity as as someone despicable and not able to have this chance to change? OK, Iran, wait there for a second. Tej is in rugby. Um, after that, I'm going to speak to Ashgar Bukhari from the Muslim Public Affairs Committee, who's a guest of mine. Jay in Walsall is also on the line. Tej, good morning. Good morning. Um, Iram says that if you tell someone they can't be rehabilitated, they won't be. But we just spoke to, and I'm sure you heard me speak to Ali, who spent 13 yeah. years in prison and is a changed man for it. Do you believe that these men can be rehabilitated? And that a- no. You don't? No, they can't. When they commit a crime like that, there is nothing you can do. No, I think they should be hanged, personally. Well, you're not the first person to say that on the show. A few people have offered to do it themselves. But, Tej... What about forgiveness? What about mercy? Are you a religious Mate, person? I am a religious person, but when you commit a crime like that, you can't be forgiven, you know? Look at the family, they're going to be living with that for the rest of their life, like when it's his birthday, you know, Christmas. How can you forgive the person, you know, that did that? Mm. Ted, stay with us. Iram, stay with us. Ashgar Bukhari, very good morning to you. Welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, Ashgar, do you think that a full life sentence is inhuman? Yeah, I think it's uh, tantamount to torture. Uh, I heard the previous guest there say that he should be hanged. Well, Adam Bellagio himself, well, when I was uh, listening to him, I actually went down to um, to um, hear him speak, and he actually said that when the judge said, well, you know, what do you suggest? And he said, kill me. And I, and I think, you know, Britain and Western countries often complain about the death penalty as, as being barbaric, but I'd say what they're handing down is far worse, torture is far worse than death. But is that, well, but isn't that the point, that it's punishment, and of course you're not going to give a prisoner what they want, because his argument for wanting death, because originally he wanted the police to shoot him dead, because he wanted to be martyred, he wanted to join his friends right. and family in heaven, is what he said. That's you're not, right. not going to yeah. give someone what they want after they've committed a crime like that, are you? It, but then Britain and, and, and the Western world shouldn't go around um, complaining about the death penalty, saying it's inhuman around the world. If they're, if they're ha- more than happy to, to do something far worse than death penalty um, and saying, well, you know, that's what justice is, um, then that's fine. But don't act like moral champions when, when you're going to commit an act, in my opinion, of torture um, um, uh, yourselves. Torture is worse than death, and, and, and that's what, in my opinion, they've elected to do uh, with this man. And the reason is, in my, uh, you know, following on from that, it's politically motivated. People, get, people have killed children and got less than that. Um, they did it because they were sending a signal. Um, it's a politically motivated murder, and they, they were making a politically motivated statement with this judgment. What do you think, uh, Tej, of what Ashgar Bukhari from the Muslim Public Affairs Committee has just said? Sorry, I didn't hear that. I missed it. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Essentially, he was uh, saying that it's politically motivated what happened, and that actually you're torturing these two men. You're torturing them to death, which is far worse than the death penalty. And it is inhuman. It is inhuman. So they're going to be in prison, yeah, for the rest of their life. They're going to enjoy it. You know, there's more luxuries in prison than, um, you know, you can think of. Yeah, well, I think we yeah, just maybe, we, maybe you should go there then and spend a little bit of time. Well, there. we we did speak it's to some we did speak to someone who'd spent thirteen years in prison, and he um, and, and he he I did say, say you know he did say if you if you think it's a holiday camp, go and spend some time there and, and find out. I can't say what I do for a job because it's involved in that kind of work. Oh, I see. Okay, but the things I see and the people I work with, they tell me things, and yeah, they're enjoying it. My mates. For example, he's just come out of prison. You know, they've enjoyed it. You think it's a holiday camp to them. Mm. Ted, thank you very much indeed for that. Jay is in Walsall. Ashgar, stay with us. Jay, good morning. Hello, good morning. Uh, Did you hear what Ashgar Bukhari said about it being inhuman, politically motivated and indeed torturing Michael Adebalaja? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with certain things, like it is torturing and I don't think so they should give the death sentence. Because if they got death sentence, they are escaped. Um, yes, they should be enlarged, but you can't call it as an inhuman because the crime they did 
um, is not an, uh, you know, a, a human won't do it. And there's one point he is making, it's political motivated. I think he has to rephrase it as a religious motivated, not a political motivated. No, no, uh, no. It's not, it's it's not, not, it's not religion, it's politics. Listen, listen, could, you, could you tell, could you, if you heard what he decided after he killing it, I did, I was he there. said, I'm, Yes, so listen, what I couldn't believe that why did it law take on one thing, okay, whatever they did was wrong, but who motivated them? Probably people like him who well, motivated the them. British the British government motivated them. The British government well, motivated uh, them. Omar Bakari um, no, 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 no. was, was involved in that. Listen, they were, they were born as Christian, right? They become Islam, that's fine. But in the name of religion, you can't kill anyone and somebody no, in the name of them a wrong impression. No, 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 not in the name of... They didn't mention politics. Then you're not listening to what they're saying. They well, they, they, they were Ashka, 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 they did bring both religion and politics into it. Yeah. You're you absolutely yeah. right. They talked about British foreign policy and how yeah. that but how that, that impacted that. upon Muslims and, their, yeah. and, and they felt their justification yeah. as Muslims yeah. was to exact revenge. Yeah. And, 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 no, no, hold on. Yeah. No, no, no. Wait, wait, Jay, 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 one second. Wait, I'm not going to lose control of this. Ashka, come back. Now... In the trial, when he was when he spoke, he made it very clear. He said, they, "They said to him, why did you go up to the camera? Why did you have to speak to, to people and, and, and get filmed?'" And he said, "If I had not done that, the British media would have claimed that the reason why I did this is because my religion taught me to hate McDonald's or freedom, or the government would say uh, um, something like that, like this. But the reason why I did it was because um, um, Britain is at war with the Muslims. Some, well, not exactly those words, but something to that." effect. Yes. In so, other words, so he did, it was yes. a political war that he was fighting. And yes, religion, i.e. God, says don't allow injustice to occur. So he took that to mean I'm going to fight back. So don't so th- this chappy over here who's going to say oh, Islam and this and that. Stop killing no, 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 millions no, no, no. of people abroad. Uh, uh, um, and guess what? Some of those people won't be angry enough and radicalise and become extreme enough to want to kill you back. It's m- politics, politics, politics. It's as simple as that. Okay. I mean, Ashkar, uh, you your minority voice in the sense that pretty much everyone that's called, texted, emailed in, Muslim and non-Muslim, feel that these people deserved exactly the same sentence uh, that they, sorry, that deserved the sentence that was handed down to them. Where do you differ from mainstream British Muslim opinion on this then? I would say... It's or where are they getting uh, it wrong? Uh, there's two things anyhow one is British Muslim opinion when they come on television and they come on radio maybe you don't believe me but I'll tell you as a fact right they're scared so what they're really doing is they're telling the world look look I'm the good guy. We're not all bad. And so they, they, they're they more, you know, it's like in, in the old days, black, black, black police officers, they, other black people used to complain about them. I'm going, look, you're harder than the white police officer because you had to prove to the other, other white police officers that, you know, they're, they're more racist than, the, the, than anyone else. And what you have with these Muslims is that what they do is instead of being honest and, and, and just just and being brave enough to say what this man did was a crime, what he did was wrong, it was unjust and it was evil, Evil, yes, but at the same time, be courageous enough to say, if that's wrong, then guess what? I heard people on this radio show say, oh, you know, um, he's got to spend, their family's got to spend life without, you know, th- their son this Christmas. Very true. But guess what? British soldiers are making sure people um, lose their lives right around the world and never spend Christmas uh, with their families. Yeah, not so right, you, not right you, around you the world. Don't, 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 wait a minute. Be factually correct. Not right around the world. Be specific not about right what you're saying. Not right around the world. Tell me the country. They're, they're not doing it. Yemen, they're doing it right now. They've, they've kidnapped people. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to go through a list of countries that British citizens are not in. Um, pa- um, Pakistan, s- sorry. I'm not going to... What British soldiers are there fighting in Pakistan currently? In fact, drone strikes and... and no, they're not British uh, soldiers. And Amer- they're drones no, no, drones no, are up by the American... Come no, on. again, you, you, this, uh, this is a, a mistake. Read, uh, Cruel Britannia, Britain has its own drones and it, it works hand in glove with America when it comes to intelligence, torture well, and Well, that's one book coming from one Cruel angle. Britannia by Ian Cobain. Uh, you can buy it in a bookshop and it has right, documents okay, time right. and time and time again Britain being involved in complicit in torture, kidnapping and murder. Okay, let's go. Um, let's speak to Aaliyah. Stay with us, Aska. Aaliyah is in Leicester. Aaliyah, are, are you a Muslim? Uh, yes, I am. Well, apparently, according to Asghar, if you agree with these sentences, you're scared of criticising 
the state because you're worried you want to try and that's that's actually that's actually a joke and i think it's probably the most pathetic thing i've ever heard i'm probably one of the most courageous british women that i know in leicester and let me tell you one thing if i have an opinion i will share it and i will share it honestly and quite frankly i think that this guy adabella whatever should get a death penalty and how you mentioned earlier that he'd be he'd be going to heaven he'd be getting what he wants he would not be going to heaven because at the end of the day if he had been fighting with that soldier in a country protecting muslims that would have been a completely different story but he was in a country where as Muslims are actually okay fair enough you know there are there are a few things where here and there we do get pushed aside we do get criticized for things but you've got to be pretty honest compared to the rest of the world we have a lot of freedom and I'm sorry but it, it then he's not protecting anyone in the UK Let's go. So technically, okay, he's not you a have freedom, but d- 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 yeah, let, let, let's see how brave you are. That makes it okay because you have freedom, while the denial of m- hundreds of millions of people around the world don't have freedom. Is that, that, is that brave of no, you to no, say that? I'm, I, that? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. I do help my brothers and sisters in Syria. I don't need to justify in public what I do to help them. I do pray for them. But at the but end of the day... you do have to justify I, coming on here. I'm sorry. I wait, 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 wait. wait. Ask ask her, her, ask her, her, stop. Do not tell Aliyah. me what I have to justify and what I don't have to justify. Firstly, I'd like to point out to you that just because you've got a gob on you doesn't mean that you can just throw accusations and say that the rest of the British Muslims are not courageous because they don't because they're just trying to go in line with what the British are saying. That's not true. You know, at the end of the day, we're all entitled to our opinions. Just because we share the opinion yes, of the British does not mean does not mean that we are not courageous. It just means You're that not. our opinion is different to yours and you need to accept Muslims that. Muslims are not. People They're scared. Have, people They're have, frightened. Oh, frightened. I'm a Muslim. I'm not frightened. Well, You can't tell me what I am. I'm, I'm on this show and I'm telling you I'm not frightened. So you that, can't tell me I'm frightened you be when frightened I'm telling of. you I'm not frightened. You're not saying anything you should be frightened of. That's not brave. To, to wait a minute, she, she, wait a minute, she, so wait a minute, she just said, wait a minute, wait a minute, whoa, 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 Ashgar, she just, she just said they should be given a death sentence. You said that people who say things like that and agree with this sentencing are scared. She's just said... Yeah, so tell me what I'm scared of. Yeah, what is she scared of? telling me I'm scared, tell me what I'm scared of because you seem to know me better than I know myself. All right, let, 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 let him clarify his point because he didn't make it clear enough first you know, time. You know, you, you know, being brave isn't saying something that everyone agrees with. That's not brave. That's normal. Nothing's going to happen to you if you say. But wait a minute! 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 What I'm saying is, when a minority is oppressed around the world and demonized in uh, in the West, that minority becomes almost apologetic, frightened of going against the majority for obvious reasons. That happened with but the black community. Agree? That happened with but immigrants when they agree? came to this country, and it is no different from Muslims here. So socially and economically and psycho- psychologically, that is the norm. Now, to say what this lady is saying, it's, it, that's nothing brave about it because she's saying exactly what the white majority wanted her to say. <laughs> However, if you were to say, and let me finish my point, if you were to say something that the white majority did not want you to say, now that's brave because you're going to get a vastly more powerful force and knowing deep in your heart that you could become get in trouble for it. That's brave. you said nothing brave on this radio show. All, right, All can you've I, done can I is speak acted now? tough to me. <laughs> okay, can I speak now? Go on, Aaliyah. Okay. First of all, I am not going to pretend to be brave if I don't share an opinion that differs from the majority. If my opinion is the same as the majority, I will share it regardless of whether it makes no me normal or different. But they don't act so you brave. can't say to me, you, "Yes, yeah, so, wait." But we're not talking about whether we're brave or not. We're talking about you being are. cowards. You're the one. You're the you one. The one who brought that up, that I'm a coward. If I share the opinion of she the majority, said she was the bravest lady in Leicester. <laughs> well, she did that. Yeah, right, right. She did yeah, that as a reaction to you. Yeah, assume, yeah, wait a minute, Ashgar. Ashgar, she did that as a reaction to you, somewhat <laughs> arrogantly assuming that because people don't agree with you, they're cowards. It's not arrogant. It's a fact. I know my own community. Oh, it's not, I'm sorry, what, I'm really? Sorry, oh, really? Okay. Wait, it's All right. Yes. Okay. Because you're a quote-unquote community it's leader. Proven as a, as a no, I'm not a community leader. I'm just a man with his eyes and ears open. What? I know my own community. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I know this. Well, you clearly don't, Ashgar. Oh, 
because because you because you haven't you haven't there hasn't been a single Muslim who's called in today who's agreed with you. What I've said, they're scared. Oh yeah, no, they're scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Say that. Did you not know Nihal? They're scared. Apparently. Okay. You know, if you read, if you read the history of Spain, you know, when the Muslims... You know, oh, no, wait a minute, Ashgar. No, oh, Ashgar, well. stop talking about the Moors. We don't want to talk about that. My God. Ashgar, thank you very much. Uh, Aliyah, thank you very much as well. Do you agree with Ashgar? Do you agree with him? Because he's saying that any Muslim who believes that these men got the sentence that they deserved, essentially, are not brave enough that you're buying into what white people think you should be saying and thinking because you're too scared to say what he's saying.